right now is one of the most pivotal moments in crypto for you as an investor to take advantage of the next six months, as I firmly believe this could be one of the most important time periods for not only crypto from a growth perspective, but from an adoption and an acceptance perspective for governments and legislation when we're talking about the election season coming up here in November. So in today's video, we're going to go over why this ca could cause one of the biggest pumps leading up to the election that we have ever seen, and also why GameFi and AI should continue to ramp up and potentially have a run this summer for GameFi, and then seeing AI as maybe the biggest niche in this bull cycle. We'll go over all of that and more, and why you need to be preparing now and line yourself up in these narratives. So without further ado, let's get in the game. And as always, guys, drop down, hit that like button and subscribe for more every single day and every week here on In The Game. And shout out to all of our sponsors. You know, like, subscribe, show support to the show, show support to our sponsors down below. In the description, we have Vulcan Forge, Ultra, Dreams Quest, Game Starter, NordVPN, Moon Tropica, and of course, our exchange partners. We have Bybit, BitGit, Mexi, Blowfin, and Avo. We have non-KYC options. We have decentralized exchange options. So you can go check them out down below in the description. So Let's go over the markets quickly. Um, Bitcoin's been chopping a little bit ever since we had this like ETH ETF news. Obviously, the big winner over the month time period has been Ethereum. So the ETH bulls, I mean, we're literally looking at almost 4K ETH. So this thing has caught up quite a bit. And it's good to see, right? People were saying ETH's dead, all this stuff. At the end of the day, all the L2s are built off of Ethereum, right? So Bitcoin, Solana, Ethereum, you know, you file an AVAX. I think Arbitrum still has a really good chance this cycle to be a, a really big winner as well. But it is nice to see the recovery here around 4,000 now for ETH. You know, we haven't seen that in quite some time. So uh, big moves for Ethereum. We're looking on the seven day charts here. We have Brett, uh, one of our favorite meme coin plays. You know, this one has absolutely recovered like crazy. It's up 50% this month. It's up 38% just this week. So that's been a major win and was a major part of our meme coin portfolio in our last video where we went over uh, the ideal altcoin portfolio if you're allocating capital today. Um, so if you didn't watch that video, go check it out after this video, of course. You're going to want to stick around for all the alpha. We have Entangle. This is one of my favorite protocols. It's a newer launch, and their tokenomics are a little more favorable than others. It's up 31% on the weekly time frame. As mentioned, we have stuff like Zentry uh, back up above four cents. Very nice to see. We have XAI doing all right. So we'll talk about that here later in the video as well. But still, the altcoin market isn't doing the numbers that people really expected it to do um, yet, which lines up a really good opportunity for you to be able to take advantage of. Now, I do want to go over a couple of things in the market really quickly. Today, we did have the Pixelmon, or it was yesterday that it launched, uh, but now we're kind of seeing the aftermath of it all. We saw Pixelmon launch, and I'm just going to go, we're going to pull up Pixelmon, and we're going to show exactly the numbers here, Mon Protocol. And right now it's sitting at a $400 million market cap. The problem here is the expectations in the market right now. Like everyone expects the projects to launch and be at a billion market cap or else it's a failure. And while I understand Portal set our expectations at a massive level, like if you're getting in on these tokens pre-market and you got in on a Portal, which a lot of people were able to, that launched at like a $1.5 billion market cap. It was a 55X on launch. Well, as far as Mon was concerned, it was only about an 8X on launch or something like that um, from most early investors. So a lot of people's expectations on these things are just completely swayed. Whereas launching at a $400 million FDV is a very impressive feat. And I don't think that's anything to um, be disappointed about. And now the market is just so oversaturated with new launches and it's an attention game, right? So every project wants to capture the attention, but how can that happen when we've had over the last couple months, we've had Nyan Heroes, Pixelmon, Carrot, we've had all these big token launches, block games, portal. It's hard to maintain the attention in the market right now. And right now, um, you know, when you're partnering up 
the lack of attention for some of these games that are coming out with a token, the lack of a use case and bad tokenomics, it's a recipe for a disaster. Um, and I do think anything like 300 to 500 million FDV on launch is a massive success. But here's the thing. We really need the catalysts to springboard the gaming space. And what is going to be those catalysts? I think the Mocha token could be one. Animoca Brands launching their token. We'll see what that happens. But, you know, I'm the thesis of tokens sparking the market is not where to look right now. The way that this market is going to get uh, kind of kickstarted is product, right? Over the last year, we saw four main catalysts in gaming. Prime, Big Time, Pixels, Mavia. What all four of those have in common is actual product, things that people can go dive into right now. Now, half the games out there are still vaporware, like in, in, in all totality. It's gimmicky marketing. It's a little bit of a game beta or a demo. And then it's uh, cinematics that make the game look sexy on the outside. But right now, gaming investors don't care about that. Like, we see the fact that we're three years into this niche. We want products. Like, development time cycles are now here. And we're seeing great products across the space. But it's the new incumbents that really spark the market. And even that's what drives the older tokens to also regain their momentum and pump because they're in the gaming niche. So right now, off the grid is the catalyst. Like there's no other thing that's going to come to market that's going to kickstart this thing quite like off the grid. And the feedback I've been seeing is absolutely crazy. Like, um, and, and I do want to mention this, like when you're investing, a good product doesn't always mean good investment and good investment doesn't always mean good product. Like look at meme coins, for example. So I think people's always swayed like a game can look great, but have bad tokenomics and a game could look mediocre, but have pumponomics and it can do very well. But the one thing here is, you know, the feedback for off the grid has been fantastic. And I do think that what we'll see is when Off the Grid comes out, this will spark a game fire run like we've never seen before. We see Stash here saying he's been playing it all weekend. Nothing in Web3 can touch this game right now. So if we thought Parallel kickstarted a gaming run or Mavia, just wait until Off the Grid gets more publicity. We see this thing for ourselves because you can't post gameplay videos of this. I, I plan to hop into this. I'm headed out to Consensus in Austin, and I plan when I come back, I'm going to hop into this game. And um, we're going to test it out, but I'm so excited for this to hit the market. I think it's going to really kickstart the gaming narrative. And, you know, Cousin Crypto says here, um, it comes from front running the narrative, not chasing it. So look, memes are hot, right? And I saw this hilarious meme right here. Looks toppy. Meanwhile, memes, they're, they're getting ready to send, right? But this is true right here. You know, the market is always running. Now it's going to go from memes, AI, gaming, but you know, you need to be positioned in the narratives before they pump. And if you see these things coming around the corner, like an off the grid, that's how you position yourself for this. And not to mention the big elephant in the room is the fact that election season is less than six months away and Trump is ramping up the crypto stuff. He posted a big memoir uh, the other day about how, you know, he's he's all in on crypto. He's forming a crypto army. And then we have Biden hiring people on his team to become more crypto savvy with the youth because the demographic of crypto investors is a much younger demographic than something like, say, the stock market. So everything right now, the ETH ETF, the Bitcoin ETF, we're post having it's lining up for a major back half of the year, especially if these presidential candidates actually continue to push crypto. And like, even if it's an election gimmick, let's just say if Trump gets in the office, there's the, the market pump is going to be absolutely ridiculous because of how pro crypto he has been. Whereas Biden has been kind of not friendly to crypto during his tenure. And now he's kind of like, you know, saying he's going to be friendlier on crypto. Is it an election gimmick or not? Regardless, I think leading up to the election, you could probably profit like crazy if we see this market run and if crypto maintains at the forefront of the election talk. So with that being said, what tokens are we looking at? What are we stacking up? You guys should have seen the altcoin portfolio video we did last time. And look, that's not my exact portfolio. That's if I'm allocating capital today, where I would be putting that capital. So if we're going down the list, um, obviously Avalanche, I think Immutable, I love Beam. And I have to say, like, 
uh, Ronan, like this is one, I, I think you cannot get enough of this before the actual bull begins. The number one gaming blockchain, uh, if we're going to take a look here, they're actually adding new contracts. There's a guy here, new contracts on the main chain, ZK question mark. So it looks like they're doing some sort of, some sort of like a ZK upgrade here in regards to the to the ronin chain and ronin is about to become open source so games don't have to be accepted by ronin i mean the influx of activity and in games into the ronin network when they go public i think is going to be major so uh this is one at this point in the market i think you cannot have enough of beam ronin super uh, I, I still like immutable but i think immutable should be smaller size because of its market cap at this point in time um, yeah, so Beam, Ronin, Super. I'm looking at Zentry quite heavily. And I have to say, um, games are actually starting to move to XAI. Now, this is one that's not in my portfolio. I have no exposure here. But I'm hearing a lot of rumblings underneath the Arbitrum chain that games are really ramping up to move over here. One of them, for example, is Crypto Unicorns. This is like an OG project here. And um, it's one that's actually been doing some really cool stuff. Uh, as far as their their game, they have a really active community, and they're actually doing their migration to XAI as we speak. So you know, it looks like Arbitrum and Zai might have their game fi run as well. So if you're positioned in those, I think it could be good. And I think Crypto Unicorns is one to keep your eye on because they're one of those first games that's really migrating over to XAI. And I'll continue to do some updates across their ecosystem as it piles up. So as far as infrastructure goes. IMX, Super, Beam, I think Zentry, I think XAI, and I think Ronin. Those are all very, very solid plays. And if we were going down the ladder here, I still love Wilder World. I think Cedify is a great accumulation. I think Miria, as far as a studio goes, is a great accumulation. I know that the unlocks for Heroes of Mavia, as an investor myself, um, my unlocks are basically paused until the beginning of 2025. So this one has a lot of upside heading into the back half of the year as well. As we see here, 27 million Ruby has been burned in our latest legendary item mint on base. So the in-game currency is becoming quite deflationary. And I think that Mavia could see another bid here heading into the back half of the year, especially if we get some sort of a game fire run. Um, and then going down the list, I think Crown's a fantastic accumulation here. I also think Moon Tropica under $20 is very, very cheap. Um, looking across at Altura, $30 million market cap. It's actually having a pretty nice day here, uh, up about 8%. That's off the back of a new listing. I know a lot of people want new listings for Altura, HTX listing today. So that's amazing to see. And another one I think is a great accumulation. This was in our altcoin portfolio as well. Uh, and that is Citus. We go over here, and this is pretty cool. So Citus, they have a bridge in their ecosystem, which is powered by Layer Zero. So if you've ever used the Citus bridge, you're actually going to be included in the big Layer Zero airdrop. So there is a, a Citus bridge airdrop for Layer Zero, which is one of the absolute most hyped airdrops coming across this year. So that is a pretty cool initiative. But nonetheless, I think under $60 million market cap, I mean, you're getting a dirt cheap Citus token here, uh, in my opinion. I don't want to dilute it too much, right? So I'm stacking up on the top quality infrastructures. I'm putting bets on smaller games, which could really springboard. And look, if you saw the altcoin portfolio video we put together uh, on Sunday, you would see that I was putting bigger bets into the infrastructure because those could grow into a big piece of the pie as far as my total portfolio. But at the same time, placing one to 2% bets into smaller market cap games with the idea that if they 5, 10, 20 X, some of these, we're going to see major upside in our portfolios as those infrastructures grow at bigger percentages, those lower market cap games where you're putting just a couple percentages in could really take off as well. So if you didn't check out that video, definitely head over there after this video uh, and then heading over to the ai space you know i think ai it was an underwhelming pump this time on the nvidia market uh or the nvidia earnings but at the end of the day like if you were a trader you were able to take advantage of these things just look at the weekly here on gpu it got up to a dollar 66 it's come back down to about a dollar 30. i still think gpu blender opsec um, I like hash AI. I like zero X zero. Let's just go over to the AI watch list. 
because um, I agree with crypto god John here, actually, um, that AI is going to be one of the biggest narratives for, you know, retail investors since the dot com bubble. I mean, to me, I've said it a lot. Gaming, AI, memes, RWA. That's where I'm positioning my capital this cycle. And just look at the NVIDIA numbers, uh, the continued growth expectations in 2025 even um, to continue beating those earnings. NVIDIA hit all-time highs today. You know, I think people are very, and I, I've seen some comments like, um, and I want to just say this. They're like, Hustle, you're like, all in on crypto gaming and now you like ai tokens i absolutely like ai tokens because look a good investor is willing to pivot their thesis so if you can't pivot your thesis and look at the market through a realistic lens you're going to become a maximalist and you're going to get trapped into something that might not materialize to the level that you think it will it's because this game fi cycle has shown that the speculation is lower it's really like we want real games so once off the grid comes through the door, my bags, I'm 41% into gaming, right? Like on the portfolio we put together just the other day, 41% of my portfolio allocation that I gave you guys is into gaming. So what that means is, you know, I still have major conviction there. It's the biggest chunk of my portfolio, but I'm absolutely going 27% into AI because I know that that 27% can multiply much harder and probably resonate much better with the retail now when off the grid launches game is going to springboard and we're going to make our bread but at the same time guys you have to be able to adapt your thesis if you look at the market through one lens you're not going to see it all you're not going to capture it all and while i still am a hundred percent focused on the gaming niche and bringing you guys the best alpha across the crypto gaming space not allocating into ai is a foolish move this cycle um so when i'm looking at ai tokens right now like I have Render in my portfolio. I have Ocean. I'm into Prime. Um, I think Pal's a good play. Desync, 0x0, GPU, OPSEC, Blender, uh, the low caps, YAI and BAI, I'm still very convicted on. So um, those are the AI tokens I'm looking at at this point in the market. And um, I, I definitely think like AI, gaming, and memes certainly aren't going away. Um, for me, it's Foxy and Brett. Um, I think Gummy, I think Tooker, I think Pepe, and I think Whiff. If you allocate across those, you're into AI, you're into gaming, you're going to have a hell of a cycle and a hell of the rest of the year because we have another round of NVIDIA earnings in three months. We're going to have plenty of AI developments in between. We're going to see GameFi launch whenever we see off the grid actually players playing it and the sentiment around it. I think GameFi is going to catch a huge run at that point in time. I've been dubbing it GameFi Summer. And then the biggest thing is the election season. How focused will these candidates be on crypto? And if they are, we're going to see one of the biggest run-ups based off the fact that if they're pushing it right in front of everyone in America and crypto becomes this well-accepted asset class in the USA, that's going to be major for adoption and major for price action. And we're going to probably see a huge leg up during that time period. So as the title or thumbnail says, prepare now. And, you know, who knows? The presidential candidates might make us rich again. You just don't know. But I think that with the speculation and with the focus that these candidates have put on crypto this cycle so far, I think as the debates heat up heading towards November, we're going to probably see crypto uh, perform quite nicely. And I'm aligning my bags right now. And I'm going to go back to this tweet here. Front run the narrative. Gaming is quiet. AI is pretty quiet. Memes are all the craze, but allocate into these things before they pump and don't chase into the pumps. That's exactly how you get wrecked. But if you have some patience in this market, I can guarantee you that conviction will come to fruition. That was a little bar there as if uh, I, I don't have ghost writers. I'm not, I'm not Drake, but uh, your conviction will come into fruition and you'll be very happy whenever you sit in these, uh, these niches and these narratives and that pump comes through and always be ready and, and always do take profits. Because I know a lot of people did not take profit on this last game fire run. And I, I've done two videos. I did a portfolio one last video and a few videos back. 
Of course, nobody wants to watch a how to exit the market video. Everyone just wants 100x gyms. But if you don't sell those gyms at the right times, it doesn't even matter. So go check out my profit taking video as well. I go over my exact profit taking strategy, how I won last cycle, and how I'm going to continue to win this cycle and help you guys along with me. Because if my bags multiply, you can guarantee I'm taking my money out, I'm taking my initial position out, and I'm scaling profits at all times. It keeps you liquid. It keeps your psyche clean. Um, so yeah, check out both of those videos. I would highly advise. I think they're some of the most valuable videos I've posted on this entire channel. And then a big shout out to our sponsors on In The Game. We have Game Starter coming through the door with their partnership with Avalanche. They're bringing out the game chain, which as they say, is a balanced, secure, and efficient blockchain structure. And their game nodes, this is going to be quite awesome. Um, you're going to be rewarded with transaction fees, the, uh, the game token, the game chain tokens, and bolstering network security throughout uh, network participation. And on top of that, they're going to be potentially, as you see here, giving out certain TGEs of their ecosystem. So 0.1% to 10% of total supply from the game chain ecosystem. Pretty cool. I think that that's like one of the highest utility, especially if you're like in a legislation that can't participate in early launches. This is a great way to get exposure to that. So shout out to GameStarter. We have Vulcan Forge with their Elysium blockchain. Coming up, they have their Elysium Accelerator, a couple of other accelerators, and several projects and talks to be onboarded to Elysium. Uh, launchpad season is going to kick off soon, they say, in the Vulcan Forged ecosystem. And just in general, they have their Vulcan. I think this is Vulcan 4 coming up at this point in time. Yeah. Uh, and their IRL conferences have always been quite successful. A lot going on in the ecosystem. And I'm super bullish on what Jamie and the team are building over there at Vulcan as well. Shout out to... Honestly, two exchanges that are the newest, but they probably offer one of the more attractive offers for you guys, the audience, especially if you're in the US, like myself, you guys can drop down below, Blowfin, no KYC. So you can get involved, you can trade, and there's no KYC. I know a lot of the other exchanges have enforced that KYC, which annexes and puts you on an island. If you're over in the US and you don't have many options, you can check out Blowfin down below or AVO. AVO is a decentralized exchange. You can custody your own crypto and still be able to trade options, perps, et cetera, all on AVO while keeping your currency in your wallet. So you have two options there if you want to check those out, as well as our other partners down below in the description. So to sum it up, I'm super bullish over the next six months. I think the narratives that we have been covering here on the channel are due for a huge run. And I think that the couple catalysts make a lot of sense. The election, off the grid, AI adoption, another round of NVIDIA earnings in a couple of months. It'll actually still be during the summertime. So I think it's a big summer and a big early fall ramping up as we head to election season. And um, the narrative also front run the narrative. Do not be the one that chases into it after the big announcements come through and after all those coins start to pump. And for God's sake, take profits on your wins. It's not about what the number runs up to. It's about how much you leave with. So please, I implore you, if you do anything in, after this video, check out the profit-taking video I did about two weeks ago. The feedback on it was incredible. And I think you can really use that strategy to your advantage and make sure that you leave this cycle with wins and not what could have been wins, right? So like the video, subscribe, help us get to 100K. We're inching closer to it. We're in the mid 96s. Help us out down below. And I'll see you guys on the next one. And if you're going to Austin Consensus, I will be out there. Uh, so holler at me and we might be able to link up. As always, like, subscribe, and play well, my friends.